All right, good afternoon, Eagles. Welcome to our CTC Live. My name is Maricely Santiago, and I am the Director of Student Life. And today we're going to talk about financial aid and veteran uh, benefits. Uh, we are here today with some of our, uh, you know, experts in the field. Uh, we have Angela and Stacy right now, and I'm hoping that we're going to get one more person coming in a little bit. But I know that we always are trying to figure out how to pay for classes. And so that's what that's one of the things we're talking about today. That's like the main thing we're talking about today, really, is what do we need to do to help you figure out how to pay for your classes? That's the main thing for today. So um, to kick us off, I want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable. Ask us any questions. That's why we're doing this live. Um, Please type in the chat if you're watching us. Um, letting you know if you have questions, let us know what they are. We love to know what's going on with you, and actually uh, try to figure out how to help you. So go ahead and ask any questions you might have as we go along. We'll do our best. We're going to be talking and answering questions as we go, but please type them in the chat if you have any questions at any time. So um, let's talk a little bit about financial aid and what that means for our students so um i don't know who's gonna start first angela or stacy angela you want to go for lunch you want me to discuss the other options first because we all know that loans are evil loans are not all evil <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they're necessary i get the fun stuff you always get stuck with the stuff you got to pay back i i know i feel bad it's uh, okay <laughs> So I'll talk about some of our other options and then uh, let's let uh, Angela take over for the loans. Um, so a couple options that you have for financial aid are grants, work study, uh, scholarships, and student loans. Angela is going to cover the student loans. I'm going to cover the other three things with y'all. So if you guys haven't yet, you need to fill out your FAFSA. That's the first step uh, to being able to get um, financial aid. Um, the first step to be able to get financial aid at CTC would be to actually become an actual student at CTC, which it looks like we have two of them now um, with us, which is great. Um, you have to be an active student in order for us to process your financial aid. So um, if you haven't filled it out, it's uh, studentaid.gov. Um, let me share my screen so that we can show that website in case y'all don't know what it looks like. Okay, so studentaid.gov. I don't, yeah, there it is. Wait, give it a it's minute because it's coming through. There it is. Okay, there we go. We have I'm the PowerPoint. Take a minute. There we go. So, oh, why is it not? Hold on. Take a big. There, is that better? Uh, there it is. Okay, there we go. So studentaid.gov um, is the free application for federal student aid. Um, what that means is this application goes towards uh, Pell Grant and student loans uh, for you to qualify for those. And then um, if you fill this out, you can possibly qualify for state grants as well. So this is the kind of like the umbrella for everything else. Um, in order to qualify for work study, this has to be filled out. In order to qualify for loans, this has to be filled out. And in some cases, um, scholarships as well. So the 25-26 FAFSA will be available sometime in December. They haven't given us a solid date yet. Unfortunately, Department of Ed hasn't. Um, however, if you're planning to attend um, in spring or summer and haven't filled yours out, please go do so. Um, a couple of the other things um, would be work study. Um, and with work study, I'm going to close this out. Uh, hopefully everybody, well, I'll leave it up just in case nobody um, was able to get a screenshot of that. But um, work study currently is closed until the spring. Um, we have maxed out uh, the amount of work studies that we currently can have for our, um, our institution. Um, however, you can still, um, Fill out an application. Let me see if I can get that to come up. Let's pause that for a second and bring up. There we go. So then we have the work study program. 
um, the QR code, you can scan that um, or take a screenshot of this so that you know the information that you need for that. So you have to be in at least six credit hours, um, uh, must be on an active degree program, must have a good uh, SAP, which is satisfactory academic progress, um, must have a 2.0, and um, have completed 67% of the classes that you've attempted. Um, Shoni Morrow is our work study coordinator and she handles all of our work study um, stuff. Her information is on the, the flyer that we have up for you. Um, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. I'm gonna do that, okay. So then, the next thing is scholarships. So scholarships come um, open up uh, December 1st, uh, 2024 for the 2526 academic year. So what does that mean? So those cover from fall of 25 to spring of 26 to summer of 26. Um, the ones for fall of 24, um, spring of 25 and summer of 25, they've already closed. Um, so if you want to get in on those, you'll need to, um, you'll need to fill, start, those applications start opening up December 1st, and they will close at the end of February. I think it's what, February 28th will be the last day to apply for those scholarships. So if you want to put that in your calendars, um, I would strongly recommend it. Um, So then a couple other things I wanna go over with you if you are a current student um, and you're not aware of these things, um, some of the basic information about how financial aid works. Um, you need to have access to your Eagle self-service. That's, that's the number one thing because that's where you're gonna get the most updated information on your financial aid um, and your student finance. So your student finance section is where it's gonna tell you how much your tuition was versus how much your financial aid was versus how much is left over. And if you have any sponsorships, waivers, et cetera, all of that information is gonna be there for you to see and it's gonna be in black and white. Um, this is kind of how um, I'm going to share this again so that you guys can see this real quick. What your Eagle self service should look like when you go into it. Um, so, can you guys see it? Okay. So your Eagle Cell service, like I said, it'll have your charges, your payments, your financial aid, your sponsorships if you had any, refunds, and then your balance. So this is how it should look in your Eagle Cell service under your student finance view. So um, when you go in, of course, you're gonna select the term that you're currently in, which this is fall 2024. It's got a drop down menu and it'll show you in each one of these blocks. Now the little triangles that are on the side, those expand so that it'll give you a little bit more information about those particular items that you're wanting to look at. Like, okay, well, if my charges are $970 and 27 cents, where did those charges come from? And what what charged me those that amount? So, and this will, when it opens up, you'll also see not just your tuition, but it'll also show you if you, you got books. So, um, get out of there again. So when do you get your financial aid is one of the biggest questions that we get asked here. Um, when is my financial aid gonna hit my account? When am I gonna have my money to buy my books? So um, typically it is 10 days prior to when classes start date. The only time that it is not solidly that way is you registered late. Um, you didn't register until after the class started. Um, those kind of things. Your financial aid wasn't complete by the time um, classes started um, or that 10 day mark. So typically, as long as everything is in order, 10 days prior to classes start date is when your funds will be in your student account. Well, the way it works is we send money over to the business office. Business office takes whatever it needs for tuition, fees, etc. Anything left over, you can then use over at the bookstore using your student ID card or your student ID number if you're ordering online. Now, the other question we get asked all the time is, when am I going to get my money? 
when am I getting that refund? I need that money to pay bills. I need that money to put gas in my car. I need that money to feed my baby. Okay. The business office does not start processing refunds until 30 days after class's start date. So if, for example, you would, for example, you would have one class start in August and then another class start in, in October, you'll get a refund for the one in August before you'll get a refund for the one in October because they're starting on two separate dates. So you need to keep that in mind as well. Um, if you do not have your bank account information linked to your Eagle Self Service, this is another one of those important details, please do so. By adding your bank account information, you can get your refund a lot quicker. Um, because otherwise they're gonna send out a paper check, it's gotta go through the mail, it's gonna take at least a week or two. I'm just letting you know. First time loan borrowers, if you guys are not aware, your funds will not disperse to the business office until 30 days after class's start date. So if you've never borrowed loans before, it'll be 30 days after class's start date that those are issued over to the business office. Financial aid communicates with you through your Eagle Mail account. If you do not have access to that, that is important for you to gain access to because that's where we're going to send you invitations in case you qualify for an additional grant. That's where we're gonna give you the most updated information as far as if there's a problem with your financial aid. We'll also send it there when we let you know that we've got your financial aid in and we're processing it. So it's very important to have those things. Um, right now we're in the fall semester. We're, we're in, today starts the second eight, six, eight week classes, right Maricelli? Today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I know there are a few classes that are still available to register for. Um, your classes in order for financial aid to cover them need to be on your, your degree program um, and also need to end by December 31st. If they are not on your degree program and they do not end by December 31st, financial aid will not cover them. If you have a class that starts November 9th and ends January 3rd, we're not gonna cover it because it crosses over semesters. So make sure that any class you register from now from now until the end of this semester ends by December 31st. Um, for satisfactory academic progress, um, we run that report at the end of every semester. So um, it can determine your eligibility for financial aid for the following semester. So for example, if you don't do so well in the fall semester and we run SAP, and it comes up that you failed your classes or you didn't complete your classes, that can affect your funding for come spring. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and SAP appeal, like I said, la SAP standards, like I said before, 67% uh, completion rate for the term for all hours attempted. And you need to maintain that 2.0 GPA. Uh, Gabriella is asking, what do we do if we never heard back about the grant application, specifically the TEOG? Um, you can contact uh, our coordinator, Shoni Morrow, um, shoot her an email. Um, let me get that up on the screen again because it has her email. Come on. So while she's doing that, it is, you know, we can talk about very generic stuff uh, here on the live and we really try to do that. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that um, you understand that we're not going to go into details, right? Because we, this is in the public setting and all of that. So, uh, we're, uh, we're just going to address in general. And if not, we're going to tell you who you need to talk to. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. 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 Stacy. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. Angela's had to leave because she's had a family emergency. Mm -hmm. um, so y'all are stuck with me, it looks like. <laughs> so it's just me, myself, and I. Um, so <coughs> let me see. She gave me some notes. So No, it's fine. So S Morrow, I think, is it S M O R O W? Mm-hmm. It's uh, S. Yes. 
at ctcd.edu. Is it one R or two? Two. Oops, oops. It's okay. So. Did I lose it again? Okay, so Shoni Morrow, she's the one that can actually help you yeah. specifically with that program. Yes, she can check on your application and she can tell you where it's at in the stages. Um, so let's see. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Gabriella, that's what we're here for. Please go ahead and ask any questions that you might have. Um, this is the opportunity for you to do that. It really helps us out because um, we can make it a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun for us if we actually are able to answer questions, make sure that you are clear on what you um, are currently doing or what you need to do. And if you have any other questions about anything else and you want to throw it in there, you know what, at this point, throw it, throw it. If I don't know what I had to answer, I will send you to the right person. Just go ahead. Let us know. Right. If you have any questions. We're going to make sure you're taken care of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to put up here our, our contact information for the office real quick. So uh, once we're, um, uh, it's really important that everybody, if you're considering coming to school in the near future, you start filling out the FAFSA. Okay. Um, it is very, very important that that we do that. Oh, let's see. Gabriella says, do you work? Do your work studies have to be related to your study program? No, I have work studies and they have nothing. Mm -hmm. They're studying. I've had like, I have 1 now that's building trades. Um, I've had some that are in almost any degree plan. It does not have to be in a specific degree plan at all. I just need people in my case. I will tell you because I have. <laughs> and Stacy hears this all the time, which is why she's <laughs> laughing, but, um. I need people that are willing to work, put in the effort and learn. Um, yes. Ultimately, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, this might be your first job and it's a great opportunity for you to say, I have this work experience and it's paid. Um, and I want somebody who's willing to put in the work. It is not complex, but I want somebody responsible, you know, somebody who's going to actually uh, help me instead of hinder me. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, we actually have three uh, work studies in financial aid um, that rotate. Don't give me that look. Blame it on Shoney. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit right now about Eagle Mail. And let me tell you why. We had two possible candidates. We got them approved. It was good to go. And the financial aid department was sending their information out to their Eagle Mail. Yep. Yep. Students at CTC get their own email and it's called Eagle Mail. The student, we were like, hey, we were really, they were like, Shoni was like, yeah, we're trying to get him in right before the cutoff. We're, I think we can approve it. I think we can approve it if he answers quickly. My second person did not realize that he was being contacted through Eagle Mail. He didn't check Eagle Mail. And by the time he figured it out, he couldn't get hired. So check your Eagle Mail. It's Please very, very important. Email. Yep. That Eagle Mail, like I said, that Eagle Mail, we, we contact you directly through there. Um, and it, we won't contact you typically through your personal email unless that one is listed as your preferred email. And even then, when we go to send out mass emails, that will go directly to your Eagle Mail. So it's very important to check that email. Um, yes. Very much right. so. So. so Go ahead. Let me go over. I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can bring this back up. Do do. And I'm going to go over the deadlines that we have, the dreaded deadline. So the deadlines for submitting your FAFSA for us to guarantee you to be ready for that semester. Okay. This is just because we have to be able to guarantee you for the beginning of the semester. That does not mean that if you turn in your FAFSA later, that we won't process you. We will still be processing FAFSAs all the way up until that FAFSA closes. So the deadline for fall was June 1st. So in order for us to guarantee you to have funding for the beginning of the fall semester, those, those FAFSAs had to be in by June 1st. Um, if they weren't in by June 1st, we couldn't guarantee that they were going to be ready by 
the beginning of the semester. Uh, we are still processing those FAFSAs as they're coming in. Um, spring is October 1st, so of course that just passed. So if you're planning on attending in the spring and you haven't gotten your FAFSA in, you need to do so as soon as possible so we can get that processed for you. Uh, we have Thanksgiving break that's coming up where we're going to be out for a week, and then we have Christmas break or the holiday break to where we're going to be out for two weeks. So during those three weeks total, we will not be processing financial aid. So it's very important for you to get that information into us. Um, for the summer, it's April 1st. So if you're planning on attending next summer or you have a sibling that's planning on attending next summer or um, a little brother or sister or cousin, aunt, uncle, whatever the case may be, um, April 1st for the summer. Uh, deadlines for loans for the fall or October 30th. So if you wanted to apply for loans for the fall semester, um, that deadline is coming up. Once that deadline passes, we will not issue any more loans for fall. Um, spring, it's March 30th, and then summer, it's June 30th. So I think that's it for basic information. Did you have any questions for me, Maricelli? Mm -mm. I don't see any questions right now. I covered uh, scholarships, right? Nope. Let's go into scholarships. Yes. Okay. So scholarships, we have what's called the foundation here at CTC. Um, let me get that one up so that I can share that information too. Cause so this is where you want to take notes, guys, because yeah. this is where you get another another way of getting free money to free, to pay for your classes. Yes, Just and there have know. been several times that we have had limited people that have applied for scholarships, and therefore the people that have gotten scholarships um, have gotten a lot more. So important to there we go. It's important to. Um, to fill out those applications. So for the 25, 26, like I talked about before, uh, those open up December 1st and they will close February 28th. Um, the foundation gets uh, millions of dollars every year to disperse between um, all of our students. Um, I remember one year we had 356 uh, scholarships and only about 204 people applied for scholarships. So some of those people that had applied for scholarships got more than one. So I strongly recommend that when it comes time, fill out the scholarship, um, get those applications in because this is this is based off of um, several different factors. And some of these are as little as $250, which y'all are like, well, $250 is nothing. It really is here at CTC because our tuition rate is only $125 for the base. So that's paying for two credit hours. You get two of those, you're basically paying for a whole class. So again, this is where, you know, making it work for you, doing things um, that, that will help you along the way to save money. So for example, if you got a scholarship and it paid for part of your tuition, you would get more of your grant money in, and that way you could save that money for when you go over to A&M. So my oldest daughter went to CTC and she got additional grants while she was here. All of the additional grants that she received, she put that money into a savings account and now she's over at A&M and she was able to pay for her first two semesters at A&M um, with what she saved from here. So it's really important to really um, work with the system so that you are saving as much money as you can for your college education because you don't want to have to get loans out the wazoo. You don't want to owe more than is necessary. And that's our goal here at financial aid is making sure that you do not owe a lot of money when you get, when you finish your education. If anything, you could, a lot of people actually leave CTC with no debt and which is really yes. what we want ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, but we do offer some debt in terms of we do well, we do can, can you very briefly at least touch on it because i know that's not I, your thing I, but i can touch a little bit on it i am not the expert angela was the expert but i will touch on it a little bit so we have what's called the subsidized loan which is subsidized by the government 
And then we have the unsubsidized loan, which is, of course, not subsidized by the government. Um, and those interest rates, let me see if I can bring those up on my no. screen so that I can tell you, not share it, but because um, it's on our, it's on actually our financial aid um, uh, web page. Yes. Uh, let's see. Or is it types of aid? Um, so those interest rates are for the subsidized um, for the 2024 as of July 1st um, is 6.533%. The origination fee is 1.057 of the, the loan. Um, the unsubsidized loan are 6.533% as well. Um, and those origination fees are again 1.057. The direct parent plus loans, which are the ones that your parents can get on your behalf, are 9.083%. And then those origination uh, fees are 4.228% of um, the loan total. Um, we do take, if you are in um, the, currently we're taking it for the nursing and the flight school. Um, aviation. Aviation. Aviation and nursing, uh, we are doing the Sally Mae loans, um, and those ones are a little more complicated, and our director is the one who is the certifying official for those. So you apply through the Sally Mae website. Um, our financial aid office certifying official certifies that loan, which would be our director. Um, it takes about seven to 10 business days after being certified before disbursement to the college. And those go directly to the business office. They do not enter our hands whatsoever. They go directly to the business office. Um, loans can only be for the cost of attendance, which is why it's so popular for the aviation and our nursing students, because our nursing program and our aviation program are a little more than what a typical program is. Um, aviation has all the flight hours, the fuel costs, the, all of that fun stuff. And then nursing, of course, all the labs and the labs and the more labs and the books, the books. Um, and then interest rates on uh, the Sally May um, start to accrue once they disperse. And for more information on those, I would suggest going to the Sally May website for. Okay. So that's about it for um, loans and disbursements. And I think that's about it. Any questions? Uh, let's see. I don't see any questions right now. Um, anybody have any questions about anything? I mean, we're talking about money, but at the same time, anything in general. Um, I know we don't have our VA rep is uh, not able to come in right now, but uh, some of the important th things that we want to always make sure that you know is that you do have to talk to the representative from uh, veteran affairs, the federal government side, and we actually have one here on our camp. Actually, we have two on our campus, which is uh, very special for us. And you can come have conversation with them here. You don't have to go to Temple or anywhere else. Um, they, if you're local here, you can just come to our uh, um, our campus, and they'll be right here. And they're really right next to the CTC. Uh, veteran affairs side of things. So yes, they're right down the hallway really, from from our uh, our veteran services. So it's very convenient, very, very convenient for you to actually um, come in here, get all of it squared away, see what benefits you're, you know, you if you require a benefit um, or if you have a benefit, how to use it. And you don't have to be like driving to one place to another. It's all right here. They're all in the same like hallway, really. So it helps because if you have a question, you just go down the hall, get your answer, come back. And they work together so much that they have a great relationship. So I really, really hope that if you have any questions and you can come and talk to them about anything VA. Of course, we're a little, you know, self-serving and we want you to come talking about, you know, coming to CTC as a student, but it really doesn't matter if you have a question about the VA and you need to talk to somebody. Uh, we have a very knowledgeable uh, individuals here that can help answer those questions. Very proud to have them on campus. 
They yes. are such a great resource, and our I I love having them. And they love helping. I mean, they're constantly trying to figure out how to help our students, and mostly with education, but. Sometimes if they need assistance with some of their health benefits or any other, any of the other benefits that um, are entitled to our uh, veterans, they can assist with. Oh, we do have a question. Do you know how to accept a scholarship online? I received one at the beginning of the year, but I'm not sure how to accept it. Ooh. Do you know the answer to that? It should be under your Eagle self service under your financial aid section. There should be an option for you to accept. But I also want to make sure that is this are you talking about? I guess my question is, is this fine? Uh, outsider or a foundation scholarship, scholarship the, like a scholarship the, from the foundation or is this a scholarship? Um, or even a grant. Because outside scholarships, when they come in, those are automatically put in the system because uh, you've obviously already accepted those technically because you've they're getting sent to us. Um, a foundation scholarship, typically they'll they'll have um, either on the scholarship portal, you'll be able to accept it or um, in your Eagle self-service. Foundation, okay. okay. Yeah. If you, yeah. So your your two options are you can log into the applications um, station and um, see if it'll allow you to accept it there. If it's not there, then look in your Eagle Self Service under your financial aid. And it also depends on when you have it available. So mm -hmm. if you did it um, in the spring, so that you can have it accessible now in the fall, and you yep. already accepted it, it will show up in your Eagle Self Service. Mm -hmm. Because the foundation will send it to um, our financial aid or and say, hey, this is yep. here we go. So typically should... what happens is the business office finds out about the scholarships. They send us a list of, of who got what and what scholarship and we input it into the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. You're welcome. And can you talk? Can you do you have a slide there somewhere where it kind of shows them on Eagle Self Service what it looks like? I would really can we kind of go over that because it's it can be a little confusing when you look at it to know oh do I owe money? Do I have money? Let me bring up. Do you know the, what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the Eagle Self Service. I have an Eagle Self Service um, view. Let's bring that up so they can see. Because I know Catalina for me, I I would have, yeah, that one. That one yeah. can be a little confusing. Yeah. So this one, I, I actually love how this gets broken down because as long as you follow the dots, and that's what I call them, my dots, <laughs> follow along with the dots, dot, dot, dot. Um, so the first circle will always be your charges. That will always be what's there first. So that's going to be your charges. And this is going to be your tuition, anything you used at the bookstore, fees, et cetera. That's where that's going to be. And then any payments that you made. If you didn't make any, there's not going to be anything there. It's going to show a big fat zero like it did for me. Then it's going to show you your financial aid, how much that was. Then it'll show you if you had any sponsors, waivers, um, exemptions, anything along those lines. Um, your financial aid will also include any of your scholarships. So it gets kind of lumped in with financial aid, um, but it's not technically. It's done by a different office, but we it gets filed with us. So then you get all of that. So you've got your charges minus your payments, minus your financial aid, minus your sponsorships or waivers or anything else. And then you get plus your refunds. We all love refunds. And at the end of the day, we want that zero balance. That's what we want to see. Um, so once your your account hits that zero balance, that means that they're processing your refund um, or it's been processed. Now, to find out how uh, you know whether or not they've processed it completely, if it's in process, that little tab down there that says refunds, if you open that up, it's going to show you whether or not a check was issued or an electronic transfer was done. Um, if it still shows in progress, that literally means they're still in progress of, of getting you that refund. Um, and sometimes it, those timeframes vary because they've got a link, our banking up with your banking, and sometimes that can take a little longer than 
um, we can estimate. So if you call us and say, when is my refund going to be in my account? It shows it's in progress. We're not going to be able to give you a definitive date, unfortunately. Um, and neither is the business office. They're going to tell you the same thing. It just depends on how fast they can get it processed. Yes, so this is this is where we get a lot of questions guys and um, mm -hmm. in a, and it's like, wait, do I owe money? Am I, you know, am I going to get it paid? I have the FAFSA. What do you mean? It says I owe you money and in this one, it's not so bad, but there is a, a 1 of those views where you start seeing negatives and you, people start freaking out over negatives. They see that, that little minus sign right in front of it and they freak out like, oh, my God, I thought I had all this extra money. I kid you not, the day after disbursement or the day of disbursement, I get more phone calls of, I have a negative balance. Why do I owe money? Chill out. That negative balance is money that's owed to you, not money that you owe. If it's a positive balance, that's when you owe us, not the other way around. So in this case, I know we've all been taught when we from from the time we're in kindergarten all the way up that negative numbers are bad. But in this case, it's the opposite. Negative numbers is good. It's an accounting thing, guys. It, yeah, it, it really is just an accounting thing. I took an, this is where you want to take that accounting class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I learned that. I was like, no negatives, and it's like, wait, negative is a credit. Oh, I know that means I get more money. But yeah. Um, so that's, that's why I wanted you to bring this up because I feel like this is something that a lot of people sometimes they look at it and it really freaks them out. Oh, yeah. So make sure that that this doesn't freak you out. And if you look at it, you know, exactly what's going on. Of course, if you have questions, um, that's when you should contact your financial aid and, and try to make sure that you get that clear. But, um, a ne if you see a negative, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It probably isn't a bad thing. Uh, it's just. You have to make sure you understand how it fits with what you're doing. Um, any other questions? Can any other questions that you have about anything? Uh, please go ahead and type them in. We are monitoring so we can make sure that we answer any questions that you type into our chat um, so that we can assist you. We've had actually some great questions. Thank you very much. Um, this really helps it make it more interactive because sometimes we just really want to answer the main questions you have and make sure that you're feeling okay with understanding how this financial aid process works, getting money, requesting money, um, and all that fun stuff. Can you, uh, I do have a question. Can you talk a little sure. bit about what happens when they fill out the FAFSA and then all of a sudden, um they there's a question in there that they have to fill out they used to fill out about housing and then now it's not automatically in there and you as financial aid you still need that to help figure out how much money you can pay them so can you explain that better than i just did so the lovely department of education came on from up high and said we're going to make a new fafsa after 40 years okay cool story bro only problem is you forgot to add a housing intent on the application, which is what we use in the financial aid office to determine your budget for the year, because we budget you for the academic year. So we need to know whether you're living on campus, off campus, or with your parents. This determines what your budgetary needs are throughout the year. So, with Department of Ed removing that from the application, we now are responsible for asking that question so that we can create your budget for the year. This is found in your Eagle Self Service under your financial aid checklist, not your required documents, your checklist. There is a difference. I wish I had a screenshot for this one, but I do not. Um, and it is, it's marked as checklist. You click on the checklist. It's a drop down menu. You have three oh. options. Do you have sorry. one Maricelli maybe? I'm sorry, say that again. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer something else. I apologize. Oh no, that's okay. I was wondering if you might've had a screenshot of the, the Eagle self service where it has the checklist, but I don't think we do. Um, I need to get what one though. Che what checklist? The checklist for the housing service, the housing intent. I have no I idea I what that looks like. I don't, I don't have one on me. Um, I need to get one though for, I think the next, um, 
the next event we do so that everybody can see what I'm talking about. Um, but on the Eagle Self Service, under your financial aid section, under the academic year that we're in, which is 2425, under the financial aid section, your checklist, not your required documents, those are different. This will be your checklist and it's a drop down menu that comes up and it's on campus, off campus or with parents. Those are your three options. Once you select that, it'll take about three to five business days for us to pull that information in. At that point, if we need any other documentation, we'll, we'll request that. But as of right now, typically most people are only being selected for that. And that's just about everybody because we have to have that information in order to create a budget for everyone. Yes, to all. <laughs> so actually, uh, we have our our um, VA person coming in to talk a little mm -hmm. bit. She's coming in a minute. So please, if you have any questions, please start typing them in because we would love to answer any questions that you may have regarding financial aid, VA, um, scholarships, how to pay for classes. And honestly, we'll answer almost anything because it's that important. Um, we want to make sure that you are able and ready uh, to, you know, either take your classes, register, we will, we will do our very best to answer the questions that you might need. Uh, let's see. We're, um, what, again, please make sure that you, as soon as you do your application for CTC, you should definitely go ahead and fill out your FAFSA. Um, that is the best way for us to be able to type because we need your application because otherwise how the heck are we going to know how to get a hold of you uh could you explain a little bit about that and how that works so a couple of things that are important when you're filling out your application for ctc make sure that you're inputting the same social security number that you put into the fafsa because if you don't we can't link it up to your account uh we literally link your FAFSA account up with your CTC account based off of that social security number. So we can't import from FAFSA if the social security number on file doesn't match the one that you put into the FAFSA. I've actually run into this three times in the last week where someone's called and been like, I put CTC on my FAFSA, why aren't you getting it? And so I go into their account and I notice there's a difference. There's a discrepancy between what's on their their FAFSA, I ask them to verify their social and it's not the same social that they're telling me over the phone. So then they have to get with records and registration to get that updated. So it's very important when you're filling out your application to make sure those two match because then we'll be able to get it in. Um, and you have to be finished at getting all of your admissions done before we can get your FAFSA in. So I just ran into a little girl who um, she filled out her FAFSA at the beginning of May but we haven't been able to pull it in because she hasn't been an actual student with CTC. She just literally started doing her um, application process at the beginning of this month. So I had to explain to her, well, we won't pull it in until you're, you're all set with admissions and then we can finally pull it in. So it's very important to make sure that all your I's are dotted and all your T's are crossed so that we can make sure that we pull in that FAFSA and get you processed. And the same thing happens with the foundation scholarships. Um, yep. I, it's my understanding that um, they have to have the, the application so that they can again match everything within the system and know who to tell financial aid and the business office, hey, we're wanting to pay for this student. So they really need that. So make sure, remember the application is very simple. It, it's in the CTC website. And it's free. Um, it, it's free, so it doesn't, and it's not very complicated. It used to be way more complicated. They've made it a little less complicated. Mm -hmm. It only gets complicated if they, and it's not that bad. It's really that sometimes we need some documentation to verify. Same thing like everything else. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're, for example, living here in Texas and you're here on military orders or, you know, you're part of um, either your spouse's orders or your parents' orders and uh, you want to get the in-state local rate, then, of course, we're going to need a little bit more documentation than if you, you know, are somebody who graduated maybe from one of the local high schools where we can verify that you've been here for a while. It makes it makes a bit of a difference. Um, 
in in figuring out you know uh what's going on Jim. Right. hey guys hey Hi. welcome to the party sorry hold on i'm not trying to share content <laughs> All right, so if our last name changes during the semester, do we need to update the FAFSA and school records? You will not update the FAFSA until you fill it out for the following academic year. Because um, if you make changes like that now, it's going to tell you that you've been selected for verification and it's going to cause a lot of issues. So leave it as is until you fill it out for the following year for the 25, 26, and then update it then. Um, for the school record, I would say immediately because um, if it's just your last name, um, that's not going to change anything as far as the FAFSA goes, because again, we link it through that social. So your social is not gonna change, it's gonna stay the same. So you're good with that. But yeah, but update your FAFSA next year. And for the school, we do want you to update yeah. it. Um, uh, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if you're going to legally change your name, then we need to make sure all your records are the same going forward. And for us, it makes it a lot easier if we know, you know, what it is. Now, you need to make sure that you're providing the proper documentation, just like if you have to change your ID, if you have to change, you know, your social security, all of that, you have to bring us a documentation that shows that you have a name change uh, so that we can go ahead and process it into our system. It's especially important that when you go to graduate, what you want on your um, your diploma. Yes, or certificate. Think it through and. It, it also can change for us. It, it might even change um, your your eagle. Eagle mail, mm -hmm. um, so there's a few things that will end up changing due to it, um, but we definitely would like to have all of that documentation properly into our system so we can go ahead and make the necessary changes. Yes. All right, Jen, we missed you. I am so sorry, guys. Do you are you, are you ready? Yeah, I'm always ready. I know you are. That's why I'm not worried about it. Um so guys, this is Jennifer Stembridge. She is our internal CTC VA guru. Um and she actually loves to talk to her students and she is amazing with what she does. Uh, so she is here to talk to you. If you have any questions about how to use your VA benefits here at Central Texas College, she is the person to talk to. And um, if you could give us like a little brief uh, overview of VA, that would be amazing. Absolutely. So like Maricelli said, my name is Jen. And I work up in, let me move my camera because I'm looking at the wrong screen and it looks weird. Um, I work in veteran services. We are in the same building as financial aid. And I apologize for my voice, it's very raspy. I've been losing my voice all weekend. Um, that's actually better today than it was. So quick overview. Um, what our department does is we help students who are um, prior service, or their dependents um, navigate their benefits. Uh, we process your benefits so that uh, you get the payout for your education, uh, whether that be in a monthly stipend, a housing allowance, or paying for the classes. And the one that you get is dependent on um, what kind of chapter you have. Um, there's a few different chapters. The four primary ones are going to be uh, chapter 35 that's survivors and dependents um, educational assistance that's for children and spouses of veterans who are um, disabled or who have died or are MIA or KIA um, then we've also got well and with chapter 35 that one gives a monthly stipend that doesn't pay for your education outright um, so that's where financial aid comes in um, and you can actually use financial aid with any of our, any of the, the veterans benefits. Um, and I also want to say, when I say that we help you process your benefits and it, just educational benefits, we, we're not the actual VA. We do have some people up here that work for the VA directly. Um, but our department is CTC and 
we're, we're the ones that process your guys' benefits for the school. Um, the next one's going to be Chapter 30. That's the Montgomery GI Bill um, for individuals who have served at least two years of active duty. That's another one that pays a monthly stipend um, and doesn't pay for school outright. And then we have Chapter 33, which is the post 9-11 GI Bill. And this one can be for either the service members or the service members can also designate benefit to their dependents um, if they're not going to use it. So this is for individuals who served on active duty after September 10th of 2001. Um, this one does pay a monthly stipend as uh, it's a monthly housing allowance as well as it pays for your education um, up front. So you don't have to worry about that with that one. Um, so with that one also, um, you do get a book allowance as well. Uh, that'll come to you directly. So it's not something that we're going to process and, you know, give you something to take to the bookstore or anything like that. Uh, same with the other chapters as well, but the 35 and 30. Now, uh, chapter 31, uh, that's the reason that we have a couple of representatives here from the VA. They're the um, voc rehab counselors and or VRNE counselors. They are the ones who process that. If you have any questions about it, they'll sit down with you. They'll walk through it with you, um, let you know, you know, if that's the best route to go. And this is for individuals with a service connected disability that limits their ability to work or prevents them from working altogether. Um, also know that when you go to them, they're going to make sure that whatever degree you're on, it's something that your benefits are going to allow. So, you know, if you your disability has something to do, you know, you can't, you have certain limitations, sorry. Um, they're not going to approve something that's going to affect your disability. Um, they also have other resources, uh, like community resources. So beyond the VA, uh, dental, medical, they've got a lot of resources. They're a really great asset to our um, department up here. So there's a few things that you're going to need to know about getting your benefits. If you've not gone to VA.gov, you're going to need to start there. So you don't automatically get that benefit. Um, you have to apply for it. If you don't apply for it, then you don't have it. If you haven't done it, you need to do it. So um, that's the very first thing. I always tell students that they need to get this done as soon as possible because it can take up to 30 days for the VA to actually process it. So if they haven't processed it when you start your classes, it could put a delay on your account. Um, there could possibly be holds or um, you can get dropped for the class for non-payment if it's not processed in a timely manner. So when you go to the VA.gov, you're going to uh, click on the VA benefits and healthcare, then click on education and training, scroll down the screen, you're going to uh, click on how to apply. That's going to open a new page, scroll down, there's a blue box. Um, you'll click on that and um, answer the questions and then uh, it'll let you know when you're done and you should receive a certificate of eligibility in the mail within 30 days. Um, so that's the first step. Then after you enroll in your classes, you're going to fill out what's called a VEC. It's a Veterans Enrollment Certificate. Um, this is extremely important to CTC because this is what tells us in Veteran Services to tell the VA that you're going to be utilizing these benefits. Um, you're going to do this is a this form through eTrieve and you're going to um, fill it out and at the bottom it's going to ask you what classes you're taking. There's a little plus little minus button so you can add your classes to each row. So put them in a separate row for each of them. Um, and then once you submit that, Currently, we process generally same day unless it's, you know, submitted late in the day, then we'll process it the next business day. When we get backed up, it can take us three to five business days. So that's another thing. As soon as you register for your classes, make that part of your registration process. Register for your classes, go fill out your VEC. 
If you have any questions about the VEC or if you want help going through it, you are more than welcome to come visit us in building 215 on the second floor. Um, and, you know, we, we've got plenty of people here who are more than happy to walk you through it. Um, also, really, 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 really quick, and this yes, is for both of you, and I want to make sure, uh, Stacy, maybe you can answer this, because I think the answer is for both, and I'm trying to help Jen a little bit with her voice here. <laughs> um, Shoot. So what happens if I am already registered for my classes, um, and then, and I'm in 12, you know, I'm registered for my classes, and then I'm like, you know what, I, I, I can't, I, I need to withdraw from one of these classes. I can't finish it. I'm going to fail it. I know I'm not doing well in it. I think I'm going to take it another semester. That way I can focus on it. I figured it out. This is not the semester for me to take that class. Should students go talk to you guys about that? Absolutely. Because Can you explain on, why? Because depending on when it happens during the, the semester, they may wind up owing funds to financial aid. Um, Department of Education, um, or they may wind up owing funds to the business office. So it's important for them to get with us to see um, what's going on and how long they've been into that class and to discuss it with them. And that's the same for the VA as well, because if you if if we're not aware that a class class has been dropped, then um, you may owe money back. Uh, so the sooner you can let us know, the sooner we can uncertify those classes for you and the quicker they, you know, stop paying out for that. So the sooner we know, the better. So Yeah, and, and just like the VA is government, so is the Department of Education, and they want their money when they want their money, and they want it right now, usually. And I bring this up because I don't deal directly with the money and stuff, but I do see some of the consequences at the end, right? People are freaking out because, oh, my God, now they're charging me for this, or they want me to repay that, or... Um, you know, it, it, a lot of things that are going on. So I, I want to make sure that everybody that's listening today is aware that this is something that they need to be aware, careful with. Make a friend in either financial aid or and or VA because that's another thing, right? Like people can yeah. use both, maybe. It's, uh, yes. VA and um, financial aid can be used hand in hand. If you um, are under the mistaken um, impression that you, if you have VA, you cannot use financial aid, um, that is not the case. I always tell um, my retirees that I'm friends with, you are applying for financial aid, correct? And they're like, well, no, because I'm getting VA. And I'm like, I don't care, bro. You still apply. Like, if you get it, you get it. You you need to you need to apply for everything. So um, I've actually helped several of my retiree friends uh, fill out their FAFSA because of that very reason. So, and that's why we do things like what we're doing today. We wanna make sure that we um, give you the opportunity to answer any questions that you might have, be knowledgeable of the fact that we are here to help and we're trying to assist you throughout this process and making sure that you have the least amount of out-of-pocket possible that you have the money to be able to pay for materials, um, classes, and anything that you might need, transportation, anything like that. We have options here. You just need to kind of meet people, ask, participate in events like today where we're trying to get information out to you. And I love the fact that we have some of you um, asking questions so that we can actually answer questions that are specific to what you need. And you're, you know, th there have been some amazing questions out of today. So thank you very much for all of those. Any last minute tips for today? I just want to touch super mm -hmm. quick on Hazelwood. Yes. So Go Hazelwood ahead. is another benefit um, that is uh, specific for Texas residents. Um, if your place of entry or your home of record is somewhere in Texas, you may qualify for it. There is, you know, other caveats to that. Um, so you have to have as a veteran, you have to have served at least 181 days. Uh, that's true also if you are transferring benefit to a child. Um, again, have to be in the state of Texas when you entered. Um, have to have an honorable or general under honorable uh, discharge from the military. Um, no federal veterans education benefits dedicated 
uh, to the payment of tuition and fees um, and not be in default on student loans. So um, that's the qualifications for a veteran and the legacy. Also, it's not just um, so it can be used or given to a biological child, a stepchild, adopted child, um, or somebody who's been claimed as a dependent on your current or previous year tax returns. Um, for the legacy, they have to be 25 years or younger on the first day of class. So if they're transferring benefits, um, and then there's also benefits for um, service related, deceased, um, missing in action, killed in action, and also for totally and permanently disabled. Again, come see us if you have any questions or give us a call if you have any questions, and we're more than happy to answer those questions for you. You can also go to the um, TPC website, um, the Texas Veterans Commission website, for more information about Hazelwood as well. Jen, do you have um, James and Lance's contact information for the VA reps that we have by chance? I sure do. If you give me just a second, I can put that over in the chat. Yes, ma'am. We had talked about it earlier, but I didn't have their contact information on hand. Stacy, uh, while she's doing that, can you, one other thing that does, we don't talk a lot about, but maybe if you are listening to this and you have somebody in high school and really need some assistance and it just needs help. Can you talk a little bit about McKinney Vento? Are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with the word. How about the students that are maybe homeless, that maybe they can't get a hold of a parent that ah, yes. have been, that, yes. So there is a section on the FAFSA that covers that. Um, now, um, even though they don't cover the housing intent, they do cover this portion. And when you select that, uh, that option on your FAFSA, it triggers a, um, a reaction on our side. So we're gonna request more information from you to verify that information. So be aware that if you put in there that you're homeless or an at-risk youth, those kind of things, we're gonna request documentation and we're gonna request more information from you. Um, and, and typically our director handles those situations and she'll do an interview process with you as well. So it's it's a process. It's not just a um, fill it out and go. It's gonna be a process once you do it. Um, is there something that they need from the high schools? Um, typically they require, let me look here real quick and see if she has anything. Yeah. And they'll, and they are going to need something from the high school if they have been designated as homeless. Um, they can also get that documentation from a member of their church or clergy, depending on their circumstances. They are going to have to provide documentation, though. Yes. So um, you just heard out of nowhere this head <laughs> out there. That is Lucette Brett. She is she's, associated she's our with our, over our floating head of power. Yes, she oversees all our financial aid and VA and I threw I threw I threw one out there that was a little bit uh, She's our wizard of Oz is what I call her. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. The wizard. She's just trying to see if we were paying attention is what it was. That's what it was. No. Um no. I really appreciate everything that you guys have been able to answer for today. We had some great, thank you, Catalina and Gabriela for actually joining us live in here. You having amazing questions. You had really good questions. So thank you. Um, and to all of you that have been watching live, I've seen people coming in and out. Thank you very much. This is recorded and this will become available in the future. Um, and you can watch it again in our YouTube page. I hope this was helpful to you. We are here to assist you. So please reach out anytime you have any questions. We would love to see you around. By the way, this weekend we do have our haunted house and fall carnival over by the planetarium building, the Mayborn Science Theater in our central campus. Financial so please... aid will be out there doing trunk or treat Friday night between six and eight. So be sure to come out and see us. We're gonna be farming for financial aid. Ooh. So please come on, come on down. Uh, supporter clubs and organizations, and it also, uh, just so that you know, part of those funds actually do go towards scholarships. So come help us out so that we can help pay for your classes as well. Thank you for all your time. We really appreciate it. You have a wonderful rest of your day.